Hey, what's up everybody? Chicago Gooner here, bringing you another Arsenal talk. Of course, I said if anything came up to talk about, um, well, here it is. Um, unfortunately, another injury, another big injury, of course, to one of our best players, Mesut Ozil, out for up to three months. Now, if we all know the medical staff over at Arsenal, it's most likely going to be four months. Uh, it almost seems like the same type of uh, tear that Oxley chamberlain had from last year, at least from um, all the little media reports that are coming out of what kind of tear it is um, in the knee. And it's just heart-wrenching. I mean, it's just like a gut shot. It's like another gut shot. Uh, if you, I mean, if you look at everybody out, you know, I mean, we have four starters out right now. Uh, Drew out, Jabuchi out, Ramsey out, and now Mesut Ozil out. Um, <laughs> you know, just walking on thin ice, you know, it's just, you know, it, you know, even though we should be used to this by now, I mean, over the past, you know, you could say six or seven years, uh, it's just been one, one big injury after another that's been, uh, you know, holding us back from uh, being actual contenders in uh, the EPL and in trying to actually win the league. Uh, it's, it's just, it just seems like it's, you know, I don't even know what to say. I mean, I'm just, like, dumbfounded. Uh, like I said, we should be almost used to this by now, but it's just, like, we just don't want to see it anymore. It's it's just terrible that we have to see one of our best players, another one of our best players, one of our starters, uh, go down with another injury. And to go in, into this a little bit further, I mean, it's just, you know, who do we have to point the finger to because... Honestly, we have no idea who to point the finger at. Uh, Arsene Wenger over the summer said he was going to do an investigation on the medical staff. Um, still to this day, I don't know what happened with it. Um, that's all he said was, I'm going to look into it and, and doing some type of investigation on the medical staff. Um, nothing really came of it. I don't know if anything did come of it. Um, obviously nothing came out of it because they didn't seem like they did made any changes to the medical staff. Uh, one of the things I was hoping for this summer is that uh, if they were going to do an investigation that they would bring on uh, some type of their own team doctor, uh, their own kind of uh, you know team doctors, much like uh, Bayern Munich has. Uh, of course, Bayern Munich's team doctor is also the uh, team doctor for the national team as well. Um, you know, Arsenal has the money to do something like this to where uh, they can have their own players under the care of one person rather than, you know, who knows who, who uh, our players are under care for. You don't, I mean, you know, some of these physios, they're, you know, I mean, let's be honest, they are glorified nurses for the most part. Um, you know, they're glorified, you know, physical therapists for the most part. You know, they're not actual uh, doctors from 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 what I understand and you know these are the guys or these are the people that are are taking care of our guys and trying to get them back on the pitch and it just doesn't make any sense to me um, you know I'm sure they might have some type of uh, uh, you know private practice or something that the players may go to but again does that really help us you know do we have the money can we have the money to uh, bring in a team doctor that can we can, you know, a guy, one single person can be uh, taking care of our guys and trying to get them back on the pitch and give them, uh, giving them all the right information, uh, giving, you know, Arson and his staff all the right information uh, so we don't uh, possibly uh, bring back a player, you know, earlier than usual. Um, you know, do we have to start pointing the finger at Arson and some of his staff? Uh, do we have to... Uh, start pointing the finger at them and try to understand what their training methods are. Um, of course, some of their training methods helped us last year uh, in the FA Cup when we played against you know Wigan in extra time and Hall City in the final in extra time. Um, you know, to where his training methods actually worked because um, you know at the end you know maybe not the Wigan game because it went down to P uh, PKs, but. Uh, we were the stronger team. We were the more attacking team. We had, uh, you could tell, we there we had more energy left than say uh, a Wigan or even a Hall City. I mean, Hall City was pretty much dead after after the full 90. You know, going into that extra time. I mean, they couldn't. Even, they could barely run around. Um, 
and they were basically like parking a bus against us and you know we had all the energy and we had uh you know the ability to keep on running as as much as we possibly could um but again do we have to point the finger at Arsene Wenger and his and his training methods are they are they too severe are they are they not good enough um you know we we brought in um a new trainer who was uh you know the trainer for uh, the, the the fitness trainer uh, for the you know for the for the German national team um, you know and he was supposed to uh, help the players along get the uh, get the players uh, like you know you know more in shape so stuff like this wouldn't happen like uh, like you know, like hamstring pulls of course that's what Aaron Ramsey has um, I think uh, like the Drew injury that's pretty um, I would say as you know that is kind of like a, a a case of bad luck maybe taking a ball or whatever you know Shea Forrest is the is the new trainer you know it's from the US he's a, he's an American and he, he was the fitness trainer for the German national team and now he's a fitness trainer for you know for Arsenal so um, is he doing things different or you know can we not uh, you know was he just doing too much at, at you know right off the get-go uh, trying to get our guys in shape or trying to uh, get their fitness right um, but it's just a crushing blow especially of one of our best players um, you know our best playmaker uh, you know we were all hoping after coming off of this uh, next international break that uh, we were going to go back to our 4-2-3-1 and, and, and start dominating again you know obviously the, the Villa game and the Galatasaray game were our two best games of the season and of course we played in that formation uh, so we were all hoping coming out of this international break that Ozil would be back, would be back at his number 10 spot, uh, pretty much dominating games. But again, you know, the German national team did a MRI on him and they they found a slight tear, in in his uh, I believe it is is his left knee. Um, so then you have to go back throughout the rest of the season, and. You know, people are always saying, you know, he's looking lazy and stuff. But I guess, you know, for me, that's how he plays. Um, you know, that's how he runs. He looks lazy, but he's not. Um, but then you got to ask a question of, you know, how long was you playing with his injury? Um, you know, playing him, uh, logging that many minutes, you know, the Spurs game, uh, the Galatasaray game, and then right after the Chelsea game. You know, he played uh, all those games. Uh, I know he got subbed out in the Galatasaray game because we went down to 10 men uh, but you know he played the Spurs game he played the uh, full Chelsea game you know and, and other than that he was basically playing almost 90 minutes in every single game uh, so was his injury uh, even prior to this um, it's very possible you know to where he 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 had a slight tear and he made it even worse by playing playing him more than 90 minutes uh, playing him you know the, the full 90 as as far as like the Chelsea went, game went uh so but it's it's just it's just discouraging it really is it's just like a it's like another gut shot it's a it's kind of like a oh Christ you know and and given the Arsenal medical staff as well it's it's uh you know they're saying 10 to 10 to 12 weeks well that's what they said about uh Oxley Chamberlain you know Oxley Chamberlain didn't come back until almost the new year from last year when he finally returned um so instead of the you know the 10 to 12 weeks you know possibly three months you know i'm thinking he, we might not see him until january sometime uh when he'll be back and 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 uh full training and be back with the team um some people might even say this is a positive um you know, when you take a player like that off of any team, you know, you saw what had happened last year when, uh, you know, Theo Walcott, Aaron Ramsey, and Ozil was, a, you know, when El Ozil went down uh, during, uh, right after that, you know, right in the first half of the Bayern Munich game, um, you kind of saw what that did to us uh, going forward. You know, we just went on a, we just went on a low streak and we couldn't do anything and he was out for six weeks. And that really kind of hurt our attack, hurt, our, hurt, you know, just whatever type of momentum we had going into that March uh, month. Um, but some people might say this might be a positive. Uh, you know, playing like devil's advocate here of, of saying this might be positive because uh, last year Mesut Ozil had a long season. He had a long summer with the World Cup. Uh, he didn't have um, as much time 
off as maybe other people did. Uh, you know, all the Germans, for at least for Arsenal, had a you know clear four weeks off, uh, while other people had you know two months, two and a half months off uh, to really rest their body and and to get their body back right and, and get back to 100%. Uh, to World Mesut Ozil didn't really have uh, that um, opportunity. I mean, you could even see uh, per Mertesacker's form right now, it's not as it was last year. Uh, it wasn't as, uh, you know, good. It wasn't as dominant as, as it was last year. Um, you know, Lucas Podolski, you know, who knows? You know, it doesn't seem like Arsene Wenger really uh, favors him all that much. So it's, it's kind of difficult to uh, try to... Um, uh, see where he's at at least like fitness wise or even playing wise but as far as you know Mesut Ozil and Per Mertesacker they're they're lagging a little bit obviously uh, their form has been good of course you know in, in Mesut Ozil's defense obviously he was playing out in the wing uh, except for about two two and a half games this whole season um, but again it might be a positive to give him a rest to, get, to uh, let him get a rest uh, from his long season last year, from his World Cup, um, to get his body right again. You know, hopefully, maybe even with this, uh, you know, when he starts his rehab on his knee to strengthen his knee back up because he's probably going to be down for at least, you know, three to four weeks of, of just healing process because uh, you really have to get off that knee. Uh, he might be doing some exercises, some re <clears throat> rehab on it, but it's not going to be to a full extent ex in, until, you know, about when he's about you know, four four to six weeks out of coming back. Um, but again, it might be a good thing that, uh, you know, he might be out for this time to give him a rest and to get his body right again. And even when he goes into that rehab, uh, it would be a great idea if, uh, you know, maybe the Arsenal medical staff or the, or the trainers um, at Arsenal says, you know what, you know, if you're going to be working out on your knee and your legs and stuff to try to get them stronger and, and you know, try to get that knee right again. You know, let's bulk up your your uh, your top half as well. You know, let's let's try to to uh, put put a few extra pounds of muscle, you know, on your upper body because he definitely needs it because you know he does get pushed off the ball a little bit too easily, um, especially in the EPL where it's it's very physical. It's a very physical game, and um, you know it's under it's unfortunate too that uh, you know you see Mesvedos will get pushed around a lot and there's just no fouls being called. Uh, in his favor, you know, I don't know, you know, if the referees have, have it out for him or whatever, but, you know, I see some other players like, uh, say, like a Wayne Rooney or or uh, um, maybe even from last year, like a Luis Suarez that, you know, they would get a little knock in the back and, you know, they would fall down and it would be an instant foul from the referee. You know, the same thing happens with Mesut Ozil and, you know, there's nothing be call there's nothing called for it. And he's taken some hard knocks this year, this this uh, this season as well. And there, you know, there's no protection whatsoever uh, from the referees. Um, so it's very discouraging. But again, um, playing devil's advocate, it might be a positive uh, to get his head right again. To uh, you know, give him that that little time off. Uh, you know, after that long season, after the long World Cup, uh, to get him back right, and maybe to come back even stronger. Um, like I said, you know, get him in the weight room, you know, put a couple extra pounds up top, you know, uh, get him, get him stronger, you know, up top and even uh, down on his legs and his knees so he can come back stronger. Um, but again, it puts a big gaping hole uh, right into our team. And unfortunately, um, we might be sticking with this 4141 or 433 hybrid or however, however you want to classify our formation currently. Um, because we really don't have, I mean, we could put Sandy Cazola in the middle again if we run that 4-2-3-1. Uh, of course, we could put Jack there, but again, who's gonna who's gonna put who's gonna be uh, playing in Jack's role then? Uh, you know, is Diaby, but Diaby is supposed to be a DM now. Uh, so who else can play there? You know, Thomas Rosicki can play there, but he's more of an attacking midfielder than he is a CM. Um, so again, you know, Thomas Rosicki, he could play in that number 10 role obviously, but uh, the way the things are shaping up, it almost seems like uh, we're going to be stuck with this 4141 or 433 hybrid, unfortunately, now, uh, because we just don't have a, you know, Sandy Cazola is good, you know, he's, he's a good player, but, you know, he's not on that uh, playmaking ability like a, like a Mesut Ozil, 
Um, so, I mean, it's like, where do we go from here? It's like, do we keep on running the same formation or do we go back to uh, the 4 2 3 one? Um, Because, you know, of course, great news is, is happening uh, right after the international break. Um, or Theo Walcott's coming back, thank God. And then uh, even Serge Gnabry is coming back as well. Uh, that's on Arsenal.com. I'm sure everybody has seen it. They made the announcement on uh, September 30th. Uh, that they they will be back after the international break. Uh, of course, with Theo, you know they're going to probably ease him back into the squad. Uh, luckily, we only have you know we don't have too many uh, you know big games as far as uh, you know like top four teams, top five teams uh, coming up any any time you know in in the recent calendar. Um, so they're going to be able to ease him back pretty pretty easily to where. Uh, hopefully we'll be up a, a couple goals and we can, you know, stick them in there in, the, you know, like the 75th minute, you know, get him 15 minutes here, give him 20 minutes next time, you know, keep building his fitness back up, keep building his, his match fitness up because uh, with this injury, we desperately need uh, Theo Walcott coming back. We desperately need uh, Aaron Ramsey to come back, you know, and even, um, you know, this is a, a question that I would pose to some of you guys in, in to even see if, if this might be even a good idea of, is, you know, is it possible when Aaron Ramsey comes back, can he be that number 10? Uh, can he fill that role? Because, you know, he kind of has some of the some of the same makings um, as a Mesut Ozil. You know, he doesn't have that uh, quality to uh, take on defenders like a, like Mesut Ozil, even Sandy Cazola does. But, uh, you know, if, if Arsene Wenger is so dead set on trying to get Aaron Ramsey and Jack Wilshire on the pitch at the same time, um, do you move Aaron Ramsey up um, in the attacking position, in the more of attacking position because of his uh, finishing ability, his goal scoring ability to where then Jack could play behind him and kind of be that, uh, like that ninja assassin and, and trying to control the game and trying to make, uh, you know, uh, uh, unsuspecting runs and, and be um, like the aggressor behind um uh, Aaron Ramsey so that might be a possibility that Aaron Ramsey could come back and possibly play that number 10 role because uh, he played it a little bit in the preseason um, I'm almost thinking like sometimes you know even uh, possibly down the road that you know Aaron Ramsey could possibly take that role over uh, m maybe like here and there but uh, it's a it's a possibility when Ramsey does come back and and uh, you know as far as the timetable now I think he's still uh, I believe like four to six weeks out from coming back um, you know you take these two weeks out so uh, by the time the international break comes out he's going to be about two to four weeks out of coming back so hopefully uh, we can get some of these guys back and, and we can you know get back on track but you know I think we're kind of lucky at the same time that um, uh, we finished our toughest part of the schedule already uh, the toughest games that we have basically left are are Liverpool and Man City or Man Man United, and you know those two teams right now are in in, in disarray. They just don't know what's uh, good or bad, and you know they're 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 pretty much kind of uh, uh, you know they're they're in you know what am I looking for? Um, I don't even know what I'm looking for, uh, but they're just not in form right now. Uh, you know, Man United fans are rejoicing right now because they're in top four, and it's just like, what are you guys trying to celebrate here when you guys still look like shit? But um, you know, I, I guess in an, in a good way, in a positive way, uh, with this Mesut Ozil uh, injury, that we've already finished our toughest part of our schedule, and you know, it on, from here on out, it's you know, it's pretty much bottom half teams, and and and, and that's basically it. Um, so that's the good. That's the good part. That maybe you know in the second half of the season. I mean, the second half of the season is going to be like a like a like a summer transfer window uh, for us. I mean, we're going to be having like uh, Dabushi coming back. We're going to have Giroud coming back. Mesut Ozil coming back. You know, basically almost all at the same time, uh, which would be kind of fucking hilarious. But um, you know, I know a lot of people are are around Twitter and, and they're you know they're up in arms and and you know there's a lot of other fans making fun of us and and saying oh you don't you know not signing Cesc Fabregas when we needed to um, you know I could go into like a 30 minute rant about that um, of the Cesc Fabregas saga and you know of all the new stuff that's been coming out um, over the last like couple weeks and few weeks and everything that Cesc has been saying too and it's just God it's just I just want to like you know 
the dude's just like a dumpster fire. I mean, honestly, um, you know, if some of the reports are being that there was being reported that uh, the deal between Sus Fabregas and Chelsea was done in January and February, um, you know, then you have to really, you know. I don't even want to get into it. I mean, if you guys want to hear something like that, you know, my views of Seth Fabregas and all the bullshit that he's been saying over the last, you know, several years about Arsenal and how much of it is bullshit, then, you know, maybe I'll do something like that for you guys if you guys want to hear my opinion on that. But, again, you know, this is kind of like a slap in the face for not getting uh, Seth Fabregas back on the team because, um, you know, my two gripes, you know, back in, in uh, uh, you know, May and June – were one you don't say no to a world-class player and number two uh, because of our injuries from last year uh, all of our injuries for the last several years um, you know that was my main uh, thing of trying to get him back into the club uh, because of our injuries you know all of our injuries cost us the league last year plain and simple the league was there for the taking for anybody to take uh, last year I mean, you saw how even how well Everton did uh, last year. Um, you're seeing them not doing so well right now. But, uh, you know, the, the league was there for the taking. But, again, uh, injuries sidetracked us. Uh, it lost us the league. Uh, we were only seven points off. And if we didn't have all those injuries, if we didn't have Theo Walcott out for most of the year, uh, Aaron Ramsey out for four months, we didn't have Oxley Chamberlain out for four or five months, um, Lucas Podolski out for three or four months, uh, Mesut Ozil out for a month and a half. Um, you know, we win the league pretty easily. We probably win it pretty comfortably. Honestly, probably about like five, six, maybe even seven points of our own that we win it by. And it, But... Injuries cost us the league. I know it happens to everybody. I know it happens to every club to where they get a knock or two or, you know, guys out for two weeks or maybe three weeks. But, you know, for Arsenal, I mean, you know, we lead, we lead the league in injuries for the past, you know, five or six years. And it, and it's pretty sad. It came on, and it came down to uh, this past summer of Arsene Wenger launching an investigation on it. You know, it took him this long to do something like that, uh, which doesn't make any sense to me. And, you know, something needs to be done. Something needs to be looked at. Some some people need to be fired, honestly. Uh, you know, whether it's even uh, part of Arsene Wenger's staff to where they're working, the, you know, they're working the players way too hard. I mean, especially in this time of the season. I mean, you have, I mean, you have games coming one right after the other after the other. You know, you know, you take a, you know, a club like Arsenal to where, you know, we've been playing uh, Saturday, Wednesday, Sunday games, you know, for the last 18 fucking years. And we keep on getting these injuries. We keep on getting major injuries to major players. You know, somewhat too, I mean, uh, you can almost say, well, is it the Emirates pitch? Is it the training ground pitch? But the training ground pitch and the Emirates pitch are the same exact pitch. They're cut the same way. They're taken care of the same way. And, you know, the Emirates pitch has been voted on as one of the, as the best pitch in, in the uh, EPL for the last, the last, what, like three or four years, um, possibly even more. Um, I know they keep on winning awards for the best pitch in the EPL. Um, so how can it be that? Uh, when it keeps on getting award after award, and the training ground crew keeps on getting awards for uh, being, you know, the the best caretakers of the pitch, and the and both pitches are the same exact way, so it can't be that. So, it's either the it's either the medical staff or it's the way that Arson and his staff uh, do their training methods that this keeps on happening uh, to players. Especially when you see hamstrings, like when you see hamstring injuries, you know those are those are the ones that you really have to look to look towards and say why is this happening? Because when you see continuous like hamstring injuries like that, or even continuous knee injuries, you got to start thinking, you know, what's going on with the staff? What's going on with Arson staff? What's going on with the medical staff? You know, are, can we not identify uh, an injury before it happens? Can we not identify that uh, maybe we're pushing a player too hard? Uh, are we training them too hard? Um, are we not giving them the right methods of training? Um, 
the right methods of stretching, maybe the right vitamins and minerals. Uh, you know, who knows what they're doing outside of the outside of of uh, when they're training and when they're when they're playing games. Um, do we need to take a look at the player themselves? What are they doing outside of of playing for Arsenal? You know, a lot of these things need to be answered <clears throat> going forward, uh, especially now. You know, um, you know, if if four starters doesn't throw up a red flag uh, right now, four starters are out right now for Arsenal. It doesn't. If that doesn't throw up a, a red flag, then I don't know what does. Um, but again, give me your thoughts. Give me your comments. Um, you know, do you think it's it's Arson and his staff? Do you think it's our medical staff? Um, do you just think it's a it's a, it's just bad luck? Um, of course, if there is uh, no such thing as bad luck, there wouldn't be luck at all. Um, is it just a coincidence? Is it, is it just uh, a freak of nature to where you know you know it's his time to get hurt? You know, it's it's a good possibility. Who knows? Um, but. Leave your comments. Tell me what you think. Um, does this hurt our chances? Does this hurt our chances to uh, get into the top four? Does this hurt our chances? And, you know, if you're still a believer in, and can we possibly win the league this year? Um, you know, leave your comments down below. I'll try to get back to them. And, uh, you know, if anything else comes up again, you know, maybe I'll do another uh, um, Arsenal talk at some point. But, uh, Anyway, enjoy your week, enjoy the international break, and that'll be it. Later.